Welcome to our channel. Enjoy listening to the audiobook. Write your feedback in the comments. Jonathan Franson, The Corrections. To The Corrections, we're opening the book on the Lamberts, a family that could very well be yours or mine. The Lamberts are tangled up in all the usual messes. Aging parents, Enid and Alfred, who are hitting a rough patch with health and getting older, and their kids, Chip, Gary, and Denise, dealing with their own heaps of personal drama. As we bounce between chilly St. Jude and bustling New York City, we see their world through eyes that could easily belong to any of us. This story is about the push and pull that's familiar to everyone. Tough secrets no one wants to talk about, trying to juggle your own life while being there for your folks, and figuring out who you are while everything around you keeps changing. It's a tale packed with love and a fair share of regret. And somehow, having a dive into the Lambert's chaos makes us take a second look at our own families. Let's get started. Meet the Lamberts. In the heart of St. Jude, Missouri, Enid and Alfred Lambert's life is far from serene. Alfred, a retired train engineer, grapples with the unyielding progression of Parkinson's disease, his once robust mind and body betraying him in small, daily humiliations. Enid, a dedicated housewife, shoulders the increasing burden of caring for her husband. Her days are punctuated by moments of quiet reflection and growing frustration, a silent acknowledgement of the unspoken truths that lie heavy in their home. The passage of time has etched deep lines of weariness into their lives. Alfred, who once effortlessly painted the patio furniture, now struggles for weeks to complete the simplest of tasks. His pride, fiercely intact, veils his vulnerabilities, leaving Enid to navigate the turbulent waters of his denial and decline. The physical and emotional toll of his condition quietly erodes the foundation of their shared existence, each day a little more of their shared past crumbling away. Their son Chip, a former college professor, is a study in contrasts. His life in New York City, marked by a series of professional and personal misadventures, stands in stark relief against his parents' static existence. Chip's world is one of relentless motion. From the fallout of an inappropriate relationship with a student to his embattled attempts at screenwriting and his fraught relationship with Julie of Rays, Chip embodies the restless spirit of a generation caught between ambition and reality his life a chaotic dance of potential and misstep. When Enid and Alfred embark on a journey to New York before their cruise, their arrival in Chip's world is a collision of different worlds. The meeting is marked by awkward exchanges and unspoken tensions, highlighting the chasm that's grown between parent and child. Enid's innocent mistake about Chip's job and her obliviousness to his lifestyle choices underscore the widening gap between expectation and reality. In these interactions, the family dynamics unfold in sharp relief. Chip's struggle with his screenplay, a tangled web of intellectual pretension and personal expression, is a mirror to his own conflicted identity. His pursuit of Julia and his interaction with his younger sister Denise further reveal the complexities of his character, a man caught in the throes of his own aspirations and failures. The narrative weaves through the Lambert family's struggles with identity, success, and the inexorable march of time. It's a tapestry of life's contradictions, the unyielding march of age, the relentless pursuit of relevance, and the enduring bonds of family that both bind and liberate. As the story unfolds, the Lamberts' journey becomes an exploration of the human condition. Through their eyes, we see the beauty and tragedy of life's imperfections, a reminder that in the end, we are all simply doing our best to navigate the corrections life demands of us. Tensions at Home In the Lambert family saga, Gary Lambert, the eldest son, emerges as a character embroiled in his own complex web of life in Philadelphia. His world, distinctly different from the stagnant air of St. Jude and the chaotic pulse of New York, is one of domestic routine and hidden turmoil. The setting opens in his dark room, a sanctuary where Gary, lost in nostalgia, develops photographs of his parents. 
these images, frozen in time, stir in him a mingling of reverence and sorrow. The tranquility of this solitary activity is punctuated by the presence of his youngest son, Jonah, who sits engrossed in Prince Caspian. The outside world intrudes in the form of muffled sounds of a soccer game, where Caroline, Gary's wife, is injured. This domestic scene is further disrupted by a phone call from Enid, requesting, with a tone of expectation, that Gary and his family return to St. Jude for one last Christmas gathering. This phone call sparks a series of events that highlight the familial and marital tensions Gary faces. His conversation with Enid is a dance around the topic of the family reunion shadowed by the unsaid and the expectations of a mother. Yet, it's the revelation of Alfred's patent and its interest to the Axon Corporation that truly captures Gary's attention, intertwining his professional acumen with personal history. The scenes in Gary's home paint a vivid picture of a family in subtle disarray. Gary's argument with Caroline over the trip to St. Jude exposes the underlying strains in their marriage. Caroline's adamant refusal to revisit the past and Gary's insistent push for a family reunion reveal a chasm of unspoken grievances and differing desires. Gary's internal conflict is palpable as he navigates these familial waters. His desire to connect with his roots and ensure his parents' well-being is at odds with the reality of his strained marriage and the differences in values and preferences that have grown over time. This struggle is not just about the decision to visit St. Jude, but also about the larger question of what family means to Gary and how he fits into the complex Lambert family tapestry. Amidst these personal and familial dilemmas, the Axon Corporation's interest in Alfred's patent becomes a focal point for Gary. It represents not just a business opportunity, but a link to his father's legacy, adding another layer to Gary's internal deliberations. In the midst of his affluent life, Gary is entangled in personal struggles, his facade of success masking deep unhappiness. He silently battles depression, resorting to alcohol as an escape, while his marriage to Caroline suffers from a lack of genuine connection. The tension escalates with Caroline's open disdain for St. Jude and its values, opposing Gary's lingering attachment to his mother, Enid. This conflict thrusts Gary into a loyalty tug of war, exacerbating his internal strife. Despite outwardly rejecting his Midwestern roots, Gary's interactions and choices reveal an ironic, reluctant emulation of his father's traits, underscoring his internal conflict and unhappiness. The Seas of Time As the cruise ship Gunnar Myrdal cuts through the ocean, Enid and Alfred find themselves in a world far removed from their familiar life in St. Jude. The cruise, a supposed escape, becomes a backdrop to the unspooling of their relationship. In the confines of their cabin, Alfred, battling the progression of Parkinson's disease, lies awake next to a snoring Enid, his mind wandering through the meandering paths of their shared past. Alfred reminisces about the early days of their courtship, days when Enid's feigned sleep was a part of their romantic ritual. He recalls how Enid's joy upon learning of her pregnancy with Denise was soon overshadowed by a domestic squabble over investment advice, a moment that led to Alfred's abrupt departure for a lonely business trip, leaving an anxious Enid behind. This trip, intended for railway inspection, entangles Alfred in an act of insider trading, a slip of information to their neighbor Chuck Meisner about Midpack's acquisition of the Ernie Belt Railroad. Meanwhile, at home, Enid grapples with the tension of Alfred's absence and the responsibilities of caring for their sons, Chip and Gary. The domestic scene is vividly painted. Chip's dramatic reaction to a dinner of liver and bacon and Gary's innocent request for seconds reveal the undercurrents of a family in subtle discord. Alfred's sternness at the dinner table, insisting Chip finish his food, contrasts with his later act of kindness carrying a sleeping chip to bed. This juxtaposition of harshness and tenderness in Alfred's character is further explored as he emerges from his lab, not to work on his steel experiments, but to seek comfort from Enid. Yet, in their bedroom, their conversation quickly devolves from scientific endeavors to emotional confrontation. 
Enid's pain at being emotionally neglected and Alfred's refusal to acknowledge his anger towards her lay bare the complexities of their marriage. The narrative then shifts to a more intimate, albeit unexpected, moment between them. Amidst a mixture of investment talk and physical intimacy, the scene captures a rare moment of connection, however fraught, between Enid and Alfred. This moment, significant for Alfred, becomes a point of realization about his true affection for sleep, a refuge from the challenges of their relationship and his deteriorating health. As the night progresses, Alfred's mental state takes a surreal turn. He converses with a hallucinatory, sociopathic turd, a bizarre manifestation of his declining mental health. This encounter, absurd as it may seem, underscores the depth of Alfred's internal struggle as he grapples with hallucinations and a loss of grip on reality. On the other hand, Enid, aided by the drug Aslan, finds temporary respite from her worries, allowing her to sleep through Alfred's nocturnal turmoil. This chemical-induced escape, however, does little to address the underlying tensions and unspoken grievances that have long marred their relationship. As dawn breaks, the narrative captures the couple at breakfast, amidst the idle chatter of fellow passengers. Unbeknownst to Enid, a crisis looms, as Alfred, overwhelmed and disoriented, finds himself on the brink of a life-threatening fall from the ship. Through these vivid scenes, the story of Enid and Alfred on the Gunner Myrdal paints a poignant picture of a marriage caught in the throes of time, illness, and unmet expectations. In the lives of Enid and Alfred on the Gunner Myrdal, we witness the poignant unraveling of a long, complex marriage. The narrative highlights the themes of love, duty, and the inevitable passage of time. Alfred's silent battle with Parkinson's and his hallucinatory experiences serve as a metaphor for the disintegration of identity and control, while Enid's desperate attempt to find solace, even in medication, underscores the burdens of caregiving and unfulfilled desires. Their journey, both literal and metaphorical, reflects the intricate dance of memory, loss, and the relentless pursuit of connection in the twilight of life. Ambition and Identity In the heart of Philadelphia, Robin Passafaro, a daughter of the city with roots entrenched in its teamster heritage, stands in contrast to her father, Nick, a man of socialist convictions. Her life's narrative is entwined with her brother Billy's tumultuous journey, a path marred by political activism and a descent into crime that culminates in a shocking act of violence at a corporate event. This act casts long shadows over Robin's existence, ensnaring her in the complex web of family loyalties and city politics. Robin's husband, Brian Callahan, recently catapulted into wealth by his software success, is consumed by a vision to revolutionize Philadelphia's dining scene. He sets his sights on Denise Lambert, drawing her into his grand plan as the head chef of The Generator, his ambitious restaurant venture. Denise's story unfolds in rich detail, tracing back to her days at Midland Pacific. There, she carves a space for herself through unwavering dedication, despite the unwanted attentions of Don Armour, her co-worker. Her relationships with her parents, Alfred and Enid, are tinged with tension and unmet expectations, sharply contrasting with her father's rigid demeanor and her mother's conventional aspirations. Denise's journey is a complex tapestry of romantic and personal entanglements. Her marriage to Emile Berger and subsequent affair with Becky Hemmerling offer glimpses into her evolving identity and her struggle against societal norms. This quest for self-acceptance continues as she finds herself drawn to Robin, leading to an affair that eventually costs her the position at the generator when the relationship comes to light. As Denise navigates these turbulent waters, her brother Chip is caught in a web of deception in Lithuania. His life is a whirlwind of precarious schemes, creating fake investment websites as part of a larger swindle. His correspondence with Denise provides a stark contrast to the relative stability of life in Philadelphia, set against the backdrop of the Lambert family's Christmas preparations. In this tapestry of lives, the Lambert family's stories intertwine, each character wrestling with their own demons and desires. 
the city of Philadelphia, with its gritty charm and complex social fabric, serves as the perfect backdrop for these narratives. From Robin's struggle with her family legacy to Chip's morally ambiguous escapades in Lithuania, their stories are a vivid portrayal of the human experience. Flawed, resilient, and endlessly fascinating. Denise's story is not just about rebellion. It's about navigating one's path in a world of conflicting expectations and norms. It underscores the challenges of forging an identity that is true to oneself while grappling with the influence of family dynamics and societal pressures. A Christmas Reunion In St. Jude, the Lambert family's final Christmas gathering unfolds not with the warmth of holiday spirit, but under the shadow of unresolved conflicts and the relentless passage of time. Alfred's worsening condition serves as a stark reminder of life's impermanence, deeply affecting each family member in different ways. Alfred, once a pillar of strength and authority, continues his battles with dementia and Parkinson's, but his moments of clarity quickly fade into episodes of confusion. This transformation challenges the family's dynamics, especially affecting Enid, who has transitioned from a traditional housewife to a weary caregiver. The strain of Alfred's illness and the responsibility of maintaining a semblance of normalcy weigh heavily on her. Gary, trying to assert control and bring rational solutions to the family's challenges, finds himself in a mire of personal dissatisfaction and marital discord. His attempts to address the delicate matter of Alfred's care only serve to highlight his own internal struggles and the distance he feels from the rest of the family. Denise, meanwhile, navigates her own journey of self-discovery and acceptance, confronting the complexities of her identity and relationships. Her experiences, marked by both success and turmoil, reflect the intricate dance of personal growth amidst familial expectations. Chip's return from Lithuania brings an air of unpredictability and a new perspective to the family's dynamics. His experiences abroad, marked by moral ambiguity and a sense of adventure, contrast sharply with the stagnant, burdened atmosphere of the Lambert household. As the family gathers around the Christmas table, the air is thick with unspoken grievances, regrets, and a palpable sense of loss. The reunion, far from healing old wounds, lays bare the fragility and complexity of their bonds. In these moments, the narrative captures the essence of family, a mix of love, resentment, shared history, and the unyielding passage of time. It becomes evident that the Lambert family's final Christmas acts as a metaphorical stage to explore the nuances of familial dynamics and the personal evolution each member undergoes. This gathering, far from being a festive reunion, unravels into a candid exposition of each character's internal conflicts and their struggle with life's unavoidable corrections. The power of the story lies in its portrayal of how family members, despite being bound by blood and history, can be profoundly disconnected from each other's realities. Gary's outburst and Denise's realizations are not just personal moments of frustration or enlightenment, but also reflect generational shifts and the changing roles within a family unit. As Gary grapples with the impending responsibility of becoming the family patriarch, and Denise with her sense of identity and autonomy, their actions underscore the tension between individual desires and familial obligations. The narrative also delves into the complexities of aging and the reversal of parental roles. Enid's transformation from a passive spectator of her life's events to a more assertive figure in Alfred's care highlights a significant shift in family power dynamics. This shift is not just a personal victory for Enid, but symbolizes a broader theme of empowerment and liberation from traditional roles, especially for women. Moreover, the text subtly critiques societal norms and expectations, particularly around issues like mental health, aging, and gender roles. Through the Lambert story, we are invited to reflect on their perceptions and biases, encouraging a deeper understanding of the human condition. To The Corrections by Jonathan Franson, you've heard the story of the Lambert family. Alfred Lambert, a retired engineer with Parkinson's, and his wife Enid confront the realities of aging and caregiving. 
Their son Chip struggles with his career and relationships, while their other son Gary faces marital issues and a connection to his father's past through a business interest. Denise, the Lambert's daughter, strives to find her identity outside of her family. The family's story culminates in a Christmas reunion, revealing deep-seated conflicts, generational differences, and the inevitable corrections life brings. <laughs>